to plug the entrance to their nest and keep intruders from gaining access. Wow. <laughs> Imagine if you're an intruder trying to come in the, uh, the nest of an ant and all you see is like 50 ant heads looking at you. <laughs> like all ready to chomp you up. You know, you're like, man, okay, I'm out of here. But and that's, that's what ants do. Um, certain ant species defend plants in exchange for food and shelter. Is that cool? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, ants used to live alongside dinosaurs back in the day. That's what it says right here. Um, ants started farming before humans did. Wow. Is that amazing? Yeah. Um, some ants form communities, uh, super colonies that are over thousands of miles long. Wow. Is that crazy? Um, ants follow scent trails led by scout ants to gather food. And also, if you were to combine the mass weight of ants on this planet, it's equal to the mass weight of humans. Wow. wow. Is that crazy? That's great. So there's as many ants in weight as there are humans in weight wow. on the earth, on the planet right now. That's a lot of ants. That's a lot of ants. That's crazy. So God, I think, did that because he wants us to consider their ways and be wise. Amen? They're everywhere. And so let's look at a couple more problems. Proverbs 14. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Basically, what does the ant do? The ant works hard. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 14, 23. It says, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Mm -hmm. on, so here we're, we're going to consider the ant, and we want to work hard like the ant. One thing about hard work is that hard work brings profits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you talk, it just leads to poverty. A lot of people talk about getting jobs, but it's a lot different to have a job than to just talk about it. You know what I mean? And uh, and so for us, you know, for me, I remember being in school, and there's a guitarist. He was an awesome guitarist. I went to school for jazz studies at USC, and down there, there's this cranky guitarist. And he said, "You know, I know my parents taught me if I just work hard, awesome things are going to happen." Is that intense? Yeah. That's literally a proverb. That's a spiritual law God created that even the world knows apart from God. Right. You work hard, good things happen. Yeah. 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 Profit comes when you work very hard. Okay. And so this guy knows, okay, if I want profit, I gotta work hard. Come on, Consider the end. Work hard. Amen, guys? Amen. And then look at Proverbs 14, uh, in verse 4. It says, where there are no oxen, the manger is empty, but from the strength of an ox comes an abundant harvest. Oh. So an ant is a lot stronger than the ox, but even an ox's strength brings about a harvest. Amen? Amen? And this should encourage some of us in the room. Because what this means is, the ox, you look at him, he's not that good looking. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. He's even not that smart. <laughs> he does one thing, he works hard. Yeah. That's all he's good for. But because he works hard, comes an abundant heart. <laughs> so brothers, you can rest assured. You don't need to look good and be super smart. We just gotta work hard. <laughs> and sisters have the added bonus of being smart and looking good. <laughs> so for hard work probably leads even more profit. Amen. <laughs> We're going to have to talk about hard work for the yeah. campus Keep it real, bro. And I think, of course, every disciple needs to know about hard work. Amen? Yeah. Nothing substitutes for hard work. Yeah. The way to grow a church is three things. Hard work, hard work, and hard work. That's it. And so, for us, last, uh, this last Friday night, we came up with a campus ministry list. And that was what was on your seats. And maybe you can share it and look together. But every disciple said, here's one or two of my prayer goals for this semester. Um, just a few of them. Teddy wants the brothers' household in Berkeley to double, to multiply. And for the Berkeley ministry to double in number. Amen. Amen. So we're talking dozens more disciples in Berkeley. Come on, Berkeley. But as we were talking about this, we read a couple of scriptures. Luke 18, if you bother God mm -hmm. enough, he'll finally give you your prayer. That's right. Because it, Luke 18 says, think about the widow bothering the judge. Yeah. 
The judge, even though he wasn't a good judge, he still gave the widow what she wanted because she kept asking. Yeah, yeah. So as students, we decide, hey, if we just keep asking God for these, he's going to give them to us. <laughs> That's awesome. But then we, we, we went to James 1. And James 1 says, yeah. listen, when you ask, you got to believe and not doubt. Because anybody yeah. who doubts yeah. is like a wave blown back and forth by the sea. He, he shouldn't expect anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Okay. Isn't that intense? Yeah. So he also said, when you pray for these things over and over again, you got to make sure you have no shred of doubt in your heart. Yeah. you got to believe that these will come true. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so here as... The different goals came. That's an awesome ringtone. <laughs> Somebody's getting down in the back. Okay. As these prayer goals all came through, we thought, wow, for Berkeley to double, that's never happened. Now, Berkeley's an awesome ministry. But they have yet to double in four months. Now that's gonna happen, man. Amen. 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 Yeah. Come on. Only if Teddy believes. Him. Only if he believes one hundred percent, it will happen. No pressure. Amen. There's no doubt. No doubt at all. Come on. And when you get rid of all your doubt, guess what you realize has to happen? Hard work. Hard work. Yeah. You realize there it is. Wow. To double its size, I mean, that means we're gonna have to study the Bible with a lot of you. Yeah. Amen. And so, for Teddy to believe that prayer means he has to count the cost. He may even have to quit his job to see that dream become reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of the work it takes to make that happen. Mm -hmm. We kept going, and oh, no. Nick said, I want to baptize my uh, one of my professors from back in the day. Professor yeah. Sidney. Come on, Nick. Who's a, a religious professor, <laughs> but identifies with Christianity. That's going to take some work right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To baptize an SF State professor. Wow. Come on. Come on. Wow. Um, Charmaine said, I want to be personally fruitful with five girls. Come on. Nice. Come on. Five people. <coughs> that takes work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of work. That's a lot of studying. That's a lot of late nights. That's a lot of crying. As you're going through sinless with people. Yeah. That's a lot of reaching out, sharing your faith. That, the work of five baptisms, when you know it's going to happen, you realize I'm at campus early in the morning. Yeah. And I'm staying there all day. Yeah. <laughs> because we got, if for that to happen and I know it's going to happen, that means I got to work hard. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lydia, her goal. And her prayer is that every student in the church has a 4.0. Woo! Oh, Come on. Now, I don't know if you've ever got a 4.0 before. Nope. <laughs> so most of us don't understand the amount of work that that's going to take. Yeah. But you can ask Brittany. She actually taught a class at the GLC called Super Fruitful in a 4.0. Woo! Because that was Brittany's nice. middle name. <laughs> Brittany is super fruitful at 4.0. Come on, Brittany. <laughs> and so she had a 4.0 in school, and she was cranking out baptisms and leading a ministry, and uh, just an amazing, incredible woman. And she still is an amazing, incredible woman. Oh, Amen. Nice. And, uh, and so to get a 4.0 it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. When you realize, hey, we're going to get 4.0s, that means, all right, there's going to be a lot of prayer. A lot of late night studying, yep. a lot of talking to students, a lot of teachers and asking teachers what you need to do. That takes work. Yep. Hard work yep. to make that happen. Yeah. And then Jerry Manley, in zeal and faith, Come on, bro. gets up and says, I want to see 10 women and 10 men added to the Berkeley ministry. Come on. This is awesome. Come on, Come on Berkeley. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's 20 additions. Yeah. Can God do it? Of course. Yeah. But God's asking us, are you going to work hard? Yeah. Come on. Okay. 20 additions in Berkeley <coughs> in the next four months. You literally, I told Jeremy, I was like, your life is over. <laughs> <laughs> you have no more life now. All you have, you only have one mission for the next four months. 
bear fruits. Wow. wow. And that's the only way with that kind of focus and hard work that God will answer that prayer. Because when we believe God's going to do it, then our eyes are open to the work it takes to make it happen. Yeah. Amen, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And so that's why we need to consider the ants and be wise. So hard work is all about you got to have wisdom. It leads to profit, and it leads to abundant hearts. Amen? Amen. And so let's jump into our first point here. Come on. Which is laying a foundation of hard work. Go ahead, yeah. bro. Let's go to first for this. Come on. Really quick, let's go to chapter 4. Verse 20, Paul's talking to the Corinthian church. And he, he describes the kingdom of God. Just a, a, a quick side note. He says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. See, this meeting right here, amen, is awesome. We're worshiping God. But let me tell you something. This is not what the kingdom of God is all about. Yep. Because, what are we doing here? We're doing a lot of talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, is talking good? Talking's great. It encourages people. Yeah. But the kingdom of God is not all about talk. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And we've got to be very clear on what it means to be a disciple in the kingdom of God. Yeah. It means power. What is power? Powerful deeds performed by God us. Yeah. That does not come from your talk because your talk leads only to poverty. Yeah. That comes from hard work. Mm -hmm. And so mm. we are talking about working hard. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's funny, every now and then I'll play video games online <laughs> to try to relate to all the young people. You know yeah. what I mean? I want Justin and Jason to know I'm with you. you know? I love yeah. watching it. So I'm willing to put in the time and play Battlefield 3. It is fun too. Charmaine <laughs> watches me every now and then, you know, trying to show her how I'm trying to relate to other people. <laughs> and so, but as I'm talking to people on the, the headset, because you actually talk to people all over the world. I don't know how God's going to use this for world evangelism, but I know in some way where it's going to be something. <laughs> and so I'm talking to people in Australia and guys in Kentucky, and a lot of them are in Wicked City, and I'm trying to get them to go to church in their area. Some of those areas don't have churches yet, but we're going to make it. Amen? Amen. And so as we're talking, there's one guy who says, you know, my girlfriend just broke up with me. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and he's like, he's like, she knows. I'm getting, it's been a few years, but I am going to get a job. Oh. I'm going to get one. Oh my. As we're playing video games online. And this guy is like a hundred star colonel. Which means every day you play for eight hours a day. He's a beast. He's a beast at video games. And so he gets a lot of respect from the guys on the video game, but no respect anywhere else because he's always talking. And mere talk leads to poverty. Is that intense? Talk about it, bro. And so I think it's a good example that we need to understand Talk doesn't get us very far. We got to work hard, amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here, the kingdom is not, man, I'm, it's so awesome to be here and all this stuff. It's no, what's the power? Yep. People are watching our church, guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. People go online to our website and want to see what's happening wow. in the San Francisco Bay International Christian Church. Yeah. Because we've come here on a mission yep. to rebuild the movement of God in San Francisco. Come on, right? Come on. Yeah. And so, the people who used to be fired up about it, but decided, well, I, I, need, to, I need to tone it down, mm -hmm. are saying, are these people relevant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Well, Mike, 
They look and they see a, a group of about 50. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, no, not yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. They're thinking that. Right. On, about us. Yep. Yeah. At this very moment. Mm -hmm. Keep it real. We can talk all we want. That's right. Mm -hmm. We can talk about our doctrine all we want. That's right. We can talk about our plans all we want. Yeah. We can even talk about how our lives have changed all we want. But until people see the power, wow. yeah. they don't see the kingdom of God. That's yeah. right. Wow. Talk about it, Carl. Right. Come on, bro. Isaiah says a noble man makes noble plans, yeah. and by noble deeds he stands. Come on. What are the noble plans you envision for yourself? Come on, bro. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to look like Brian Cox. <laughs> <laughs>
go to heaven. Come on, bro. Yeah. Come on. Come on, bro. Yeah. Come on, Mike. Come on. That's crazy. <laughs> that we have the gateway of salvation in this old historic building of Fort Mason. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come cheap. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. Amen, guys? Amen. Amen. And so, when you look at your life, you got to just make a decision. If you know it's not where it needs to be at, I need to change. Amen. Amen. That's what God's asking you to do right now. Say, I need to change. So, and sanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Yes. Don't be insane. Make a decision. I must be different. Amen. Something needs to change in my life. Come on. Don't walk out of here the same person as when you walked in. There it is. Be a different person. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Awesome. Let's look at uh, the next part, which is John chapter 4. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. So it says, verse 36, even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life. So that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you've not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Mm. See, the salvation of the people in this moment was based on the hard work of the people who worked before them. Wow. Because when you sow, you reap later. You don't reap right when you sow. Wouldn't that be crazy? A farmer, psh, <laughs> where's my cornites? What are you doing? Right. Like literally a minute later, like, okay, this, this farmer's out of his mind. You yeah. gotta wait. Yeah. 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 But when you sow that little seed, this huge corn plant grows up. You reap later, yep. but you reap greater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you sow comes back in an even more awesome way. Right. And so, as we're sowing right now, people will be saved. Just like the way you're saved because people sowed before you. That's right. It took hard work for you to be here right now. Yeah. It took the Chicago church giving $35,000 to plant a church here. Wow. Isn't that crazy? A group of people in Chicago said, we're willing to pay 35 grand to see this happen. Amen. Come on. That's intense. And LA said, we're going to chip in a lot of money too. Come on. So, the price has been paid by people who worked before to have this group. What are we going to do for the people later? Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. There's somebody waiting two years from now, and when you work hard, that person is going to say, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your hard work you did right now. Wow. Wow. Thanks for sharing your faith, walking with God. Thanks for making this church your first priority. Come on, Mike. Come on. Because now I've entered the kingdom of God. Because of your hard work. I can't wait for this church to hit 500. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I'm going to be making phone calls. I said, hey, I just want to let you know we're about 500 strong right now. Maybe we should talk. <laughs> we're relevant. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and, but where, what's going to take it for us to get there? Hard work right now, guys. Yeah. It's not just going to happen. We've got we to lay this foundation of costly stone. Yeah. Mm. Amen. So, Amen. Let's get into a few things that help the hard work. Amen, guys? Come on, Amen. Come on, Mike. Number one is gratitude. Yeah. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. First one, it says, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received. And on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you believed 
in vain. That's intense. <laughs> for what I received, I passed on to you as a first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And then he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. Most of them were still living. Though some had fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James. Then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles. And do not even deserve to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. Wow. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I. But the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach. And this is what you believe. Amen, bro. Come on. So, Paul, pretty awesome disciple, right? Yeah. Yes. Kind of evangelized the whole Roman Empire. <laughs> and then it adopted Christianity a few hundred like, years later. That's effective. Yeah. He worked hard. Why? He says, I used to kill Christians. And then God decided to make me an apostle in the kingdom. Right. Mm. That's, I don't deserve that. Right. And so he's walking around thinking, man, God made me an apostle and I'm a Christ I murdered Christians. Okay. I am really lucky and fortunate. Yeah. He walks into a city. He says, okay, this is not going to go without defense. I'm going to work my tail off to crank this city right now. Nice. And in three months, he would evangelize the city and have a cranking ministry and then take off and go to the next town. <laughs> three months. He would start a ministry that would change the entire region. Is that awesome? Yeah. Wow. I think for us, you know, for me, I think, was born in the church. Mainline church, I was born into in Ohio. Then my mom moved down to a mainline church in Florida in the 80s. And then she gets married, and my dad, my new dad, goes and sees the movement up in Boston. And we joined the Boston church in the, in the mid-80s. So I got to go to the Boston Garden and see it just begin. I got to see the first LA mission team get sent out. Mm -hmm. In the whole movement. And the awesome thing was that I got to see the kingdom, but the hard thing was I took it for granted. Yeah. I'd grown up around it my whole life. Yeah. And so, you know, you're just like, I was born into this. Like, I've been here my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so you go to church, you're just like, yeah, this is. There's probably way more better things out there, but this is pretty awesome too. Yeah. Mm. And then I fell away for three years after I graduated college. And as a fall away, you, you go, I just start going after it, partying, bartending, living with my girlfriend, stealing money from my job, buying a motorcycle around Los Angeles, doing everything I wanted to do, go to Vegas, go gamble, all that stuff. Like, let's live it up. I mean, this was the guy born into the kingdom literally a prodigal son wasting his money away, you know, on whatever. Mm. And so, but out there, you, you see something, you realize there's nothing in the world. Yep. Everything people are looking for is empty. Yeah. <clears throat> Whether it's an education and career, you get there, you realize it's just the higher you get up, the more competition and animosity there is. Yes. I don't want that. I don't want to climb the corporate ladder. You go out partying, and you realize, man, you have a blast with a bunch of people you don't know. <laughs> but if you stop partying, they never talk to you again. Right. Wow. And a lot of them are just looking out for themselves, what they want, what they can get. Oh, Girls get used. I saw a guy get drunk. Nobody cared about him. He went out and drove a car to a tree. 
but it's paralyzed. And thinking that's what is the result of that. I even saw one time a couple making out, girl turns around, throws up, turns back around, keeps making out with the guy. And I was the one serving them drinks because I was the bartender. And I think, this is the life that's so upheld by all the music videos. Another girl was waiting to go to the bathroom. Oh no. And she pooped while she was in line. Oh. 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 Sorry, I know I shouldn't say that up here. But I just want you to understand, it's empty. Right? Yeah. It's just nasty. It's real, bro. I saw the busters running and like, what's going on? They're like, some girl just went to the bathroom while she was in line to go to the bathroom. I was like, this, this party scene is stupid. <laughs> it's so worthless. Keep it real, bro. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's nasty. Yeah. And yet, the world has made it look awesome. Yeah. Like it's everything you want. Right. Uh, it's so sick. It's, I, I lived in it. Relationships, they may be the, the closest thing, but when you idolize a person that's not perfect, they're going to destroy you. Yeah. Come on, yeah. They're gonna hurt you. Come on, bro. Because they they're not perfect. They need God in their life as much as you do. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, right. And so in the end, three years later, I I decided, well, maybe I should start reading my Bible again. <laughs> Let me just start reading it because I really liked when I used to have my quiet times every morning. And literally in a few weeks, the word of God just revolutionized my heart. And I I told my girlfriend I'm not living with her anymore, and I started going back to church. Mm. Mm. And coming back, I realized this is special. Mm. And I'm the ex bartender who used to live with my girlfriend, and now God's grace has made me a church leader. Come on, bro. Wow. 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 So I don't get up here thinking, I'm awesome and I deserve this. I realize, I don't deserve this. But man, it's so awesome to be doing this. <laughs> and I want to make it amazing. Come on. I want the church to be 50,000. Yeah. And to scare people because of how powerful God is in this church. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And we got the seed and it's growing right now, amen? Mm -hmm. It takes a little patience, but it'll get there. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and so, for me, I think, when I walk on campus, I want campus to crank. Right? Because right? yeah. I need it to be, deserve to be in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, to be a part of this where this is what people look for. This is what yeah. the movie stars say, you know, I just want this. It's the kingdom. Yeah. Yep. That's right. They don't want it. This is it. This is what people search for their whole lives and never find and die of a drug overdose. Because wow. they don't find the kingdom. Come on, yeah. bro. Mm -hmm. For us guys, we got it. Yeah. Are you grateful for the kingdom? Come on, bro. Yeah. Are you really grateful for this church? Amen? Amen. Amen. Paul, he was so grateful, he said, I'm going to work hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You will not work hard unless you realize you don't deserve to be here. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do you think you deserve to be here? Mm -hmm. Are you critical of people around you? Come on. Thinking that you're better and this is your church and I'm in charge? Or do you realize I'm just lucky to have these people as my friends? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they may not be perfect, but I'm just grateful I'm right here. Like these people are awesome. Wow. Amen? Amen. Amen. Where is your heart towards the people around you? I think for us we gotta be fired up. Amen, guys? Amen. 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 Matthew 9. Come on. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. You guys with me right now? Yeah. Yeah. Teens, you guys with me? Amen. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Here's another thing that you gotta do for to be a hard worker. Come on. <laughs> it says 
verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Yep. So it's not the harvest is few and there's a lot of workers. It's the other way around. Amen, guys? Yeah. Ask the Lord the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have in and of ourselves the ability to be able to do God's plan here in San Francisco? Yes. yes. No. No. <laughs> no. We don't, we don't have the ability to do this, guys. Yeah. I know it kind of sounds like a trick question. Yeah, whatever. Well, <laughs> but we don't. That's why Jesus says you got to pray to be a hard worker. Yeah. Because we're talking about a galactic spiritual battle between God and Satan. Yeah. And if we're going to, in any way, be able to swing a sword on that level, you got to pray like crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. If you want to be a hard worker, you got to have an awesome prayer life. Yep. Okay. How was your prayer life this morning? Nice. For me, I'm convicted. Because I stayed up late last night, and not too late, but I was still up late, and I woke up late, and I went on a prayer walk, but it was only for about 10 minutes. That is not going to cut it. Come on, Mike. I can't have a prayer life like that and say, I'm a church. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. It's hypocritical, and it's not going to get us very far. Come on, bro. And if I'm the ceiling of the ministry, then man, that means everybody else is at like one minute prayer walks. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I just want to let you know, I'm going to repent. Come on, bro. And that will never happen again. Amen. I will pray an hour at least every day. Wow. Because if we're going to build something awesome here, we need to be praying. Amen. And so, you may be feeling convicted too right now. Come on. But the stupidest thing is just to say, well... I'm not going to do anything. Make a decision to pray. Yeah. That's where it starts. Come on, bro. And I guess... Come on, yeah. man. I remember uh, getting restored. Uh, there was always a woman who would come up to me and say, I'm praying for you. So every time I was at church, Sonia Gonzalez, oh. the mom, oh, yeah. she's a short, fierce little woman. She is. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, I'm praying for you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, thanks. All right. Every time I'm praying for you. Finally, her prayers came true. I got restored. Wow. And so I went up to her. I said, hey, you can stop praying. <laughs> and she said, no. <laughs> I'm still praying for you. <laughs> That's awesome. I think uh, for us to work hard, we can't rely on ourselves, guys. We don't have the ability to do it. Yeah. You're going to get super worn out and bitter and angry and tired and ticked off. Because you don't have the amount of energy it takes to fulfill those dreams like on this campus ministry prayers. You don't have the ability. But if you pray, God can give it to you. Uh -huh. That's your only hope. Your only hope. If we don't work hard enough to make this happen, it's simply because we didn't pray hard enough to get the energy to do it. Yeah. Wow. That's really where it lies in our prayer life. Amen, guys? Amen. 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 Next thing is uh, 1 Chronicles 29. You gotta have devotion. And we're gonna look really quick at David's devotion to building the kingdom. Come on, bro. Come on, Mike. Start to get quiet out there. You guys okay? Do we need to stretch or anything like that? Okay. 29 verse 1. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen is young and inexperienced. The task is great. Because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. Amen, guys? Yeah. We're not building something for man. It is for God that we are building this. Right. Yeah. With all my resources, I've provided for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood. I guess he really wanted to be specific on what to use the wood for. Amen? Yeah. As well as onyx for the settings, turquoise stones of various colors, and all kinds of fire stone and mar or fine stone and marble. All of these in large quantities. Check this out. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, wow, come on. I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Wow, that's awesome. Mm. Over and above everything I've provided for this holy temple, 3,000 talents of gold. 
David gave 110 tons of gold oh, out of his pockets oh. to build the temple of God. <laughs> 7,000 talents of refined silver. So that's 260 tons of silver. For the overlay of the walls of the buildings, for the gold work and the silver work, and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now, who is willing to consecrate himself today to the Lord? Um, who is willing? Can you imagine just seeing David put his contribution into the plate right there? Yeah. <laughs> hey, bring the, bring the dump truck and pull it. <laughs> okay, we still got four more. Let's keep going. And you just see 110 tons of gold was David's contribution. Wow. You're like, man, that's devotion. Yeah. And he said, you know how it happened? Because I'm devoted to God, right? Wow. You can tell how devoted somebody is to building God's kingdom by what they put in the plates. Mm -hmm. People who are not devoted are not consistent or committed to it. But the people who realize it's up to us, they're committed. Now, I know you're not putting 110 tons of gold in because yeah. you would take care of all our problems for a while. <laughs> If you could. That's billions and billions of dollars. Amen. But I want to see are you devoted not just in your time, but in your finances? For real. For the church, we each week have a $700 gap we need to bridge to be able to meet our budget. That means we all got to start giving more in our mission, in our regular weekly contributions. Yeah. And so we came up with an easy way to remember it is based on the holy number of seven. So the teens give seven. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> I need more in that idea. Amen. Okay. And that's spiritual because seven is a spiritual number. But now we want the campus, of course, to lead the way for the teens. And we want them to be double spiritual. That's $14 more. Amen. 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 And those are for campus and people with part-time jobs, etc. Now... Then there's the working singles. Yeah! You have a full-time job. Come on. And, and those are the ones who are going to lead the way for the campus and the teens. And they're going to be triple spiritual. Okay. Yeah. And you have $21. Come on, bro. This is just an easy way to mean it. I don't really mean you're more spiritual than the teens, okay? But it's just an easy way to remember. And then finally for the Marys, we're going to lead the way for the whole church. Amen? Amen. By being a quadruple spiritual number, 28. Nice. Uh, so the Marys give $28 more a week. Nice. To be able to meet the needs of the church. Come on. And if we all could first talk through this, go through our budget, commit to it, I know you may think, I can't do that. Listen, $14 is nothing. $21, $20, that's nothing to God. Yeah. When he has billions and trillions of dollars at his disposal, mm. disposal. He can just totally just give it to you. Amen? Amen. But are you devoted? Let's see what the people do. <coughs> Verse 6. Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work, gave willingly. Wow. wow. They gave toward the work of the temple of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold. So guess how much that is? 375 tons. Oh. Sorry, no, that's 190 tons. Whoops, my bad. 190, a little more than 190 tons of gold. So David gives 110 tons, and the people say, well, let's bring in our dump trucks of gold. <laughs> and they bring 190 more tons of gold. Wow. So right there, you got probably about 300 tons of gold given by the people wow. to build the town. Oh, my God. Amazing. It says 10,000 talents of silver, so that's 375 tons of silver. Um, 18,000 talents of bronze and 100,000 talents of iron. I, I don't even know who counted all that. 
Any who had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the temple of the Lord in the custody of Jehil, the Gershonites. The people rejoiced in the willing response of leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. Wow. So guys, just imagine how much of an awesome time this was for Israel. Imagine we're about to build a temple for God, and we bring in 300 tons of gold to do it. Wow. And everybody's like, this is awesome. Guys, our kingdom that we're building today is far greater because it's a spiritual kingdom and not a physical kingdom like Israel's. Yes. What we're doing here matters more. And we should be even more devoted to then the Israelites to building God's kingdom here in San Francisco. And if we're talking 14, 21, or 28, you should say, hey, if you can get more, give more. Amen. Say, hey, I got more to give because, listen, there's some... Moms with single, that are single moms with kids that can't even probably match near what you can do. Mm -hmm. And so, for us, we want to follow and be devoted, mm -hmm. right? Amen? Amen? Now, be wise, too, and get advice, because on the opposite end, some people are like, well, I'm just going to give everything I have to live on, and sorry, brothers, I don't have rent money this week. Oh, <laughs> no. So you got to get advice, and you got to make sure that you're living in faith, not right. robbing Peter to pay Paul. Amen? Oh. And then all the other brothers have to pay your rent for you. Really. But we need to really make a plan and say, let's do this as a church. Amen, guys? Amen. Let's meet this budget gap. Let's fill it in. Let's see what God does as we're devoted. And I believe it's going to get better and better and better because we're laying down the costly stones it takes to build God's church. Amen, Amen guys? Amen. Amen. Next one is... Uh, Oh, well, we're talking about love. I think a guy who's done this, um, I'm listening to him up a lot here, but Brian Carr is an awesome example of this. Amen. Come on. He's given up a lot to be an intern, self-paid intern for the Boston Church. Come on, bro. Come on. And uh, the family he worked for before said, you're crazy. Don't you know if you stay with us, you're set for life? Because wow. they were a very affluent family in New York City. But instead, now, he's given all that up and he's working for the church. And he knows God's going to take care of him. Amen? Amen. Amen? And that's devotion to God. I mean, technically, he's given up a lot, but it's all future promises he's given up so that he can build God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, let's go to Acts 2 real quick. Come on, Come on, Mike. Let's go, Mike. Come on, bro. awesome. It says in verse 17, in the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Another part of building the kingdom, because this was at the very beginning of the church, is that we have to dream dreams and see visions. Amen? Amen. To work hard and to build something awesome means you've got to have a vision of what you want to see happen. Do you have a vision? Do you have a vision for your Bible talk? And of the people that are there. And to say, here's where we're going. Here's my dream. Here's my vision for San Jose. Mm, come on, come on. For Berkeley. Uh, for San Mateo. For the Latin ministry. Uh, for San Francisco. Come on. Come on, yeah. Here's the vision I have. God says, that is the kingdom right there. Yeah. Come on. And that's the vision that built the first century church. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Charlton got off the plane after the GLC, he was filled with vision. Yeah. Come on. He goes straight to his house, sits down with his family, and does a seeking God study with his wow. dad. Wow. Wow. So cool. His vision, my family's going to be saved. Come on. Come on. And because of that faith and that vision, the other guys got on board. And now, today, his dad wow. is going to become. A sold out disciple. Oh, that would not have happened if Charlton had no vision when he got yeah. off the plane and said, Man, can't wait to kick it here with my family. Can't wait to just chill and have them make me some adobo. He said, No, I'm coming here to save my family. I have a vision. And he came like a wrecking ball for God. It destroyed and demolished all of what Satan was trying to build there in his dad's life. Is that awesome? Yeah. I want to challenge you to have that kind of faith. 
to steamroll on to SF State <laughs> and say, we're going to baptize these students. Come on. And if Paul could do it in three months, well, we got four months to build something that's going to crank San Francisco. Come on, brother. This month, this that's semester. Awesome. Amen. To steamroll on to Berkeley Come on. with a vision. And to say, let's do this. I'm not quitting until we got a great ministry here and God makes me go somewhere else. Come on, bro. Yeah. And San Jose to say, listen, God is working a lot out down there. You got the Fergus moving in, Bonwar's getting baptized, Kelsey Campbell came out, and she's down there. I mean, God is just saying, I'm gonna pull everybody I possibly can in to build something awesome in San Jose. Yeah. But do you have a vision for the ministry? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do you have a vision for that Bible talk? Come on. Do you have a vision to see it double and to see two Bible talks in San Jose? Because that's where it's going, amen? Come on. Pretty soon. What about San Mateo? Come on, San Mateo. Cindy came up and she said, you know what? I want to crank these Bible studies. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so she's at the salon with her, with her hairdresser and she said, hey, let's study the Bible. But she's fired up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the woman says, I'm all in. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they study the Bible. <laughs> I think for us, nice. we got to be filled with vision. That's the key. Amen? Yeah. yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, you may relate to this one real quick. Okay. Have you ever written a paper and then you see it get deleted? Yeah. Yeah. You ever like spend eight hours writing out your 10 page paper and you press the wrong button and it's gone? This happened to me back in 2002 when I was going to college. Computers weren't as advanced to like save every three seconds. And if you didn't hit save a lot, that thing was not saved on anything. And I accidentally hit the wrong button, and boom, eight pages gone. In my whole night, eight hours of writing and research were down the drain in vain. I think sometimes as disciples, when we don't see the expectations we expect, we start thinking our works in vain too. Let's read verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers, Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? So the work you do, maybe it doesn't turn out exactly like you planned, but God knows that it's not in vain. Yeah. Yeah. Something, you either got trained or you're ready to do something else awesome. Amen, guys? Amen. But for this, don't think for a minute of the past and that it means what you're doing now doesn't matter. Right. We can look and we can say, no, I did this before, and here's what happens. Yeah. It was in vain. Mm. And now we say, not this time, God. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I failed once. Wow. I'm not letting that happen again. And we stop being devoted fully to the work. Yeah. Wow. And God says, no, no, it's, it's not. It's not in vain. Trust me, my hard drive is limitless. <laughs> and nothing ever gets erased. Amen. <laughs> no matter how many buttons you try to push, I'll always remember your work. Wow. Does that fire you up? Yeah. And so, you got to know your work is being remembered. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Let's go to Revelation 2. Come on, Michael. Oh, Michael. Oh. Verse 1. It says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus. Right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand. And walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work. And your perseverance. Is that awesome? Yeah. Jesus echoes from heaven and says, I know your hard work. That should fire you up. Yeah. Yeah. You should know, oh my gosh. Wow. Maybe nobody else claps when I show up after a hard day. Mm. Maybe I work hard like that little ant. Mm. Dragging my work that I gotta do. 
And I finally walk in and the other ants don't even notice. But God sees it. Yeah. He knows it. He sees your work. And he knows it's not a thing. Yeah. And with Bonmar, I think an awesome thing was we would stay up late, me and Brittany would be in San Jose till almost midnight. Come on. And you're walking back, driving back home. Mm -hmm. And you can be content knowing, God, Jesus knows I'm working on. Yeah. Come on. No matter what happens, whatever decision is made, Jesus knows I'm working hard for him. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so we gotta remember the end, guys. Amen? Yeah. Consider its ways to be wise. Don't think God doesn't see your work. Be grateful you're here. Pray to be able to work the way God needs us to. Yeah. yeah. You gotta be devoted to God. And you gotta have vision for what God's gonna do. Come on. That doesn't spell anything. <laughs> so you're gonna have to work harder on memorizing those four things. <laughs> But the awesome thing is, is Jesus is saying from heaven, I know your heart. Amen. Come on. You work hard, I know. You can't hide it from me. It's never in vain. Amen, guys? Amen. Amen. I hope that inspires you. Yeah. Woo! So stand for the Our God is alive. Come on, bro. Come on. 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 Come